My name is Joe and joining me ahead of game week 11 in Sky is Luke. Luke, how are you? Okay, Joe, I think I've um, I've kind of blanked out the last two weeks from my mind because every time I logged into either my Sky or my FPL team, like many, just greeted by a sea of orange and red and, yeah. uh, you know, unknown information and still games to be played. And I kind of just decided to, I'm going to forget all that. And now we're going to go back and engage from this yeah. moment when the press conferences are going on as we're recording, I believe. So there are. news will continue to drip through. A drip yeah, through. yeah we're having some it, yeah. drip feed of information. Um, the big one is going to be tomorrow um, when we get the Liverpool press conference. So the mm. big one we're looking for is Friday. Um, news of Salah. Now, it looks like... Now, Salah has, pest, has tested positive twice for COVID-19. Um, we don't know... What we don't know is availability long term or kind of short to medium term. We're fairly confident. the Brighton game, basically. We're fairly confident he's out of the Leicester game. I mean, that's pretty much like hundred mm. <laughs> percent he's out for the Leicester game. But is it going to extend to the Brighton game? And if it extends to the Brighton game as well, you've got a hefty price tag up front, which could easily be used for other other players and also um, other players that have got like, for example, we're going to speak about Zaha. Um, and Crystal Palace, where there's some good captaincy days there. So lots for us Sky managers to think about. Um, and it's really tough. We don't know about Brighton. And could it be even longer? We don't know. Um, we don't even know if he's OK. I mean, he might be. I mean, you hear lots of reports about COVID-19. Some people are like, you know, asymptomatic. They're not. Um, they, they're fine after a week or two. And other people... You know, we're talking, you know, it could be months. We don't know. We can assume because he's a fit bloke that he's fine. But, um, yeah, wait and see. Um, I think before we get into our teams and what we're going to do and some of those community questions, which are very Salah and Zaha based, um, I just thought we'd have a little recap at this uh, this uh, second international break mark um, of the bonus point stars so far. Um, so what I've done is I've just drawn out those that have um, most often, most frequently got the top awards for the bonuses, the, the tier twos, um, but also those man of the matches as well. So, um, yeah, it's not with man of the match. Most man of the matches, Kane, Vardy. I mean, that's they're just going with the sexy goal scorer, aren't they? <laughs> there. Yeah, I think there's a bit of an English bias in this yeah. game as well sometimes, at least it seems to be. But to be fair, Kane and Vardy have obviously been involved in games where they've been hitting braces occasionally and stuff so yeah understandable so that shows the value in those premium strikers which is why Salah has got that spot at the moment in many people's teams and there are other players that can get um, not only the goals but also those other other bonus points and man of the match as well um, passing tier 2 Thiago Silva who's a bit of a passing legend um, and Tom mm. Kearney from, from Fulham they've uh, got passing tier tw uh, 2 five times but it's some of these other other players I'm particularly more interested in. Um, Keane at Everton, Gabriel, Diaz, Rodri. They've all got passing tier uh, four times, passing tier two four times, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, and yeah, pretty much all of those are you know considering at some point, but especially Diaz. Now Diaz is in your team. Yes. At the moment, so and and Gabriel is now after last week. But, um, I think I think on those ones there, the names that you've listed, the reason why mm. most people or the experienced managers will will drift towards the defenders rather than the midfielders like Rodri is because obviously they've got other ways they can gain points. It basically clean yeah. sheets. Um, and, and I guess you know when you look at goals for Rodri and a centre back, yeah. um, you could argue the centre backs might actually get more than him over the course of the season too. So. Yeah, I think it's just having that extra string to the bow, even though Rodri's probably um, nailed on for passing every time he takes to the pitch. You don't expect him to to score that often. Having said that, he did score a header for Spain over the weekend and he has got an absolute rifle on him. So you never know, I suppose. Yeah. But the centre-back's generally more secure. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, definitely. I see, first of all, Rodri in the team, I'd think, ah, I know. They, they know what they're doing because... Um, they know they've looked to the passing tier. So um, saves tier two. Ramsdale um, is. I mean, that shows what the Sheffield United defence is up to at the moment. Um, so he's he's busy. Uh, he's he's got saves tier two four times. Uh, Martinez, Darlow, and Ariello, Ariello uh, three three times they've mm. achieved that top saving tier. So I've got um, Patricio my team. Um, so I'm not I'm not going to mess around with goalkeepers really. But um, yeah, looking at that really. Martinez, Poss and 
And Darlow, if you've got Darlow and you've got a captaincy day coming up as well, where Darlow could be handy and he's he's certainly getting the saves tier. So Yeah. I wish I went for either Martinez or mm. Patricio or Darlow, to be honest, because yeah. I'm one of the unlucky guys, I guess, with Guita, who's been yeah. absolutely terrible. Um, however, his time to shine might be yes, coming up, I guess. Coming up. <laughs> um, tackles tier two. Here they are, the legends of this season, I think, so far. Ailing and Dallas. Uh, Romeo, Townsend and Allen have got all got tackles tier two three times. Um, I, I guess the interesting ones there... Is I mean Ailing and Dallas we all know about really and one mm. of them should be in most teams I think Dallas in particular is good value um, but Townsend with Palace um, a very intriguing differential if you want to be betting against Zaha or the Palace defence um, Townsend you know I wouldn't I wouldn't object to someone getting Townsend in I mean it's a bit it's a bit off the off the chart but if you've got loads of transfers and you fancy a differential possibly. Um, I, you're probably not keen. <laughs> no, okay. Um, I mean, well, he, he can, I mean, yeah, it's a solid one, but I mean, you don't re you don't really want solid when you no. when you're targeting a few games, do you? You want you kind of want explosive, I guess. Yeah. So um, I wouldn't go there. Romeo, Romeo, I say um, before when I said about mm. you know comparing the defenders to the midfielders and people will often go for the defenders because they've got a high ceiling. I think Romeo is a bit of an exception because he's so cheap and he yeah. takes up one of those dud spots in your yeah. team that you kind of need like a filler spot. Um, I think he's he's probably one of the better ones at the moment. Yeah. Southampton are also one of these teams that we've mentioned quite a few times that can get Friday and Monday mm -hmm. games. So when there's no Ings around and um, and Southampton don't really have that many other options, no. I mean, you could argue Ward-Prowse and Adams are, are decent options, but then they're taking up a more expensive and a better spot often. So Romeo is, is almost like a perfect little cheeky yeah. option there to, to cover those captain days because no, you know you're going to get seven points or yeah, whatever it is. You know you're going to get something there. Um, yeah. Shots tier two, I mean, obviously... You know what are shots equal goals hopefully <laughs> so it's uh those that have scored a lot but uh, but of course so kane has got shots tier two three times he's the top he's in my team i'm really reluctant to give him up um in a game with limited transfers in fpl you can move him out and you know spend hits and all that kind of stuff so kane you know he's not a season keeper in that format but within sky i think i'm, I'm gonna want him at some point soon and um, it's a precious transfer to get rid of him and I think he can still do well in yeah it's a against... very tricky one isn't yeah. it because I mean when you look at the fixtures it makes total sense to get rid of Tottenham I think mm. they've got some a really hard run um, but individually he's been great mm. he looks on form um, as you can see he's, he can get bonus he's obviously got yeah. penalties they can come in any game yeah. Um, but it's more so for me the fact that because we've got so many unknowns and so many other injuries to deal with, mm. using uh, and obviously there's a fear now that we might blast through these swaps pretty quickly, mm. um, and we don't know. Obviously, there could be more carnage to come. It doesn't look like um, slowing up yeah. anytime. So, are you even afforded the option for tactical swaps when you've got a player playing in your team and to take him out? That's what's running through my head. I'd like to do it, but I don't know whether. I could therefore oh, use too many of these tactical swaps and suffer later on. Well, I don't know. The the Premier League have hinted that they're going to be unleashing the uh, December and January fixtures soon, and and they will be together. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess yeah. even if there's just a week gap between those announcements, and I before I get rid of a player like Kane, if I think I want to get rid, if I got rid of him, it would be very tactical, as in. Um, you know, not just you know three for ones and stuff, because it, it's more uh, it's more looking at those fixtures, the game days, the ca yeah. And Vardy cadences. stands out, doesn't it? Vardy yeah. currently stands out um, as a good swap there. Um, but th let's have a look at some other shots tier two. Um, the, those who've got got it twice: are Salah and Mane. Now Salah, particularly good. It's good to see Mane there because in one of the moves I'll discuss a bit later. Um, Removing Salah would mean getting Mane in down the line because I wouldn't couldn't afford to go back to Salah, but I could with Mane. And it's good to see Mane getting that top tier of, of shots because we know that he can score an assist as Salah can. But if he's getting that as well, um, DCL, great fixtures coming up. Uh, Fernandez, we know what he can do, he's just points everywhere. Vardy is there, and of course, Barnes. Now, I think Barnes is the one there that sort of he can get the shots tier, but he won't necessarily get the goals. Whereas the others, I think they'll get the goals and the shots too. So, um, yeah, Barnes is not one I'm particularly keen on. 
Um, but all of the others, yeah, these look good. Vardy in particular. Mm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. So let's have a look at your team because you mentioned about Kane and Vardy as well. So I guess that's something you're thinking about coming up. So for the benefit of those uh, listening to the podcast version, you've got Guita. Um, then you also have Chilwell, Dallas, um, uh, Gabriel. That? Yeah, Gabriel, uh, Diaz. Uh, you've got De Bruyne, Barnes. Oh, Barnes, who I've just been slagging off. Um, <laughs> and Grealish and Rodri, uh, Rodriguez and um, got Kane and Salah up front. Uh, I mean, that's a really good 4 4 2, though. Um, you've got some options. Um, you know, like, yeah, I guess Barnes has got great fixtures coming up, so you're probably not going to remove him. But Vardy would be the one to get if you were going to get Leicester. And you've got mm. no, so you've got no Zaha, but you've got Guita. So, yeah. yeah, is that the way it's panning out? You don't need to get Vardy or. Zaha. Well, this is it. I mean, a part of me feels like Guita's going to continue to punish me here. It's, it's annoying because I've picked Guita for this reason um, to obviously have the days where many people won't want to bring in a Palace player, but it's just fallen in such a way, um, and with Salah's injury yeah. particularly, um, that you can get you know, possibly a four for one if you include doubling on the captains for, yeah. for, for the, the best captain pick, which is Zaha. So yeah. now I'm in a position where I might be tempted to not do that move because I have coverage and therefore suffer because I don't have the best captain. Yeah. Um, so part of me feels like I should probably still just get Zaha um, because, I mean doesn't matter how you dress it. I mean, pa- Palace aren't particularly great. Zaha's got a massive history of being not particularly great himself. But to stay with the pack, I mean, he's so well-owned and he's actually been really good this season. Yeah. So it, it's like I'm trying to talk myself out of him being a good option when in reality, it's probably not the case and he's probably just easier just to get him. Um, it's another swap though, which I don't particularly want to use. No. But when Salah may miss two games and that's my... My main concerns here, really, when I, when, when that team's uh, in front of you is, I don't have Bruno Fernandes, um, who's becoming a problem yeah. um, for me because he's been fantastic uh, in the odd game. He's, mm. he's been poor as well, but he's also been very good. Um, and he's obviously got a great game. I know Man United are pretty terrible at home. So again, am I talking myself into I don't need him yeah. for that game? But it's home to West Brom. So mm. that concerns me. And then um, there's the likes of Vardy, uh, Antonio and Zaha. So these these four names are the guys I want, really. Bruno, Antonio, Zaha and Vardy. Um, I'm not going to get all of them. Um, and I have to work out who I want to get rid of in order to get them. So Salah kind of makes sense at the moment because, you know, he could miss two games. Mm-hmm. If the news comes out he's only missing one, I don't know if I want to take him out because I'll definitely want him back. Yeah. So... I'm really hoping I get some concrete news on that. So Salah to Vardy is one I'm thinking of. That home to Fulham game that's coming up just mm. looks absolutely ripe for, for points. Um, and then the other one, I guess, would would either be um, would be Kane out to one of the other guys, either Bruno Fernandez um, or or you know one of the other guys I talked about. Mm. Barnes is another option, but like you say, they've got some good games coming up. And then if I get Vardy, I've already got Barnes, so could mm. I just chance the Barnes? Basically, my team's in a position now where I've got a lot of games where I, I don't feel like I've got the best captain choice. No. And that's not a nice position to be in. But it's also... But sometimes the best captain choice isn't Fails. the best captain choice. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's one it of those annoying... Because I've been in this position before with, you know, with whichever player and you, you, you want to get the best captain choice and you do. And then as a result, you don't captain your other player and then they score more. And it's so... Funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, been and, there lots of times. And so um, that transfer loses you points and that's the most annoying thing where a transfer loses points. 100%, yeah. And I, definitely that's, that's the case for me quite a few times it's happened. Um, so yeah, this part of the luck of the draw, isn't it? And at the end of the day, I'll be guided very much on that Salah news. There is a chance that I don't get any of these guys in and I just stick where I am because I have used seven subs. So I've got 33 out of 40 left. If I use one or two more, obviously that'll put me down to 32, 31. And the rate that players are dropping and the carnage that's going on, that's a concern for me. So I would rather stay closer to 33. However, when the opportunity to present themselves, sometimes you just have to take yeah. it. I mean, transfers in the bank is the same as, you know, having 5 million in the bank and not living your life. At the end of the day, you have yeah. to you have to use them sometimes. Yeah. And I think Zaha presents you with an opportunity that is is probably too good to, to turn down, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I'll put my team up now because it's a sort of similar issue, but different 
players at stake. So I've got a 3-4-3 at the moment. Um, I've got Patricio, Zuma, Dallas and White. So quite a cheap back line. And as a result, I've, got, I've spent a bit up front. Uh, I've got De Bruyne, Grealish, Fernandez, and Bowen, who is my Antonio placeholder because I wasn't sure how long he was going to be out for. And then I've got Kane, Calvert-Lewin and Salah. Um, you can tell this is a couple of days old, this picture, because I haven't sorted my captains out and Salah's got an orange flag. He's now got a red flag. <laughs> so it looks like he's pretty much pretty much out as far as we know. Um, so my so my I'm in a good I'm in a good position, but also, you know, like, all, you know, fantasy managers, we're in, always in a tricky position every week with decisions. So I've got 36 transfers left. I'm in the top 5K, so I'm exactly where I want to be. I'm exactly... Uh, you know where I want to be in transfer wise, but Salah not playing for a week, maybe two weeks, is a, is an issue when I have that level of transfers left and other players out there. So the sensible move to me would be Salah to Zaha, captain Zaha, I'll get two captaincies out of Zaha. Salah's not even playing. Um, Zaha plays on the Monday after Salah won't be playing against Leicester. So, um, and then I've got the option of moving back to Salah straight away um, or doing something else. I don't know, whichever, the, you know, the way the injuries or transfers or the further fixtures transpire. Yeah, um, on that note, I'm just going to drop in, by the way, um, if people don't follow him already, at plan it, so it's two separate words, not a planet, plan it sky um, is, a, is a chap called Ian, I think, and he's, um, yes. he's done a little fixture, fixture prediction spreadsheet. And he's been very, very good so far at predicting which games will come on Fridays and Mondays oh. in the future. Um, so just on that note about Zaha, there is a chance, uh, again, that Zaha could play Friday the 4th of December before all the other players. Okay. Um, because it could be one of the games that's picked, which would be Palace versus West Brom. Yeah. So if we imagine that happens as well, and Salah misses that game versus Brighton, you've suddenly got a Friday captain before... Mm. Liverpool play again as well, so you could be looking at a ridiculous six amount of games. Six for one is that? Yeah, six essentially, for six uh, for none. Um, okay. If you double, if you're counting the captains as double, obviously it's three games to zero. Um, but it's just a chance. It's not. It's not confirmed. That's I mean, Palace have had half a double game week in FPL yeah. terms. I know, one, and then one. and then it just sounds so good, doesn't it? And then you just know Zaha will just yeah. blank or get a red card. Get two points. Get, two points. get minus. Yeah. Um, but just on sheer volume alone, yeah. it makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it quite could quite easily not be the game because there are three other ones that could be picked for that day and Palace have had a few Fridays maybe, yeah. unless I've made that up. It feels like they have, so we'll see. Uh, my other option is um, Bowen and Salah out. After Bowen plays, move him to Zaha, move Salah to Bardi. Um, and then, so I still, uh, Zaha's still part of that. Um, but it's getting Vardy in as well. So Vardy gives me some captaincy options coming up. Um, but then I'm not sure about that one. I think it's, it's slightly too ambitious for me <laughs> because Bowen is, is a sort of Antonio placeholder. I, I always know that I can get Antonio with Bowen there. Um, also with Salah out I'm, and with that move in mind, I would probably be looking to get Diaz in. So that's the good bit. But the bad bit is I wouldn't be able to go back to Salah and I would go back to Mane. So which goes back to those shots tiers, that may actually be end up being a good thing because we've seen Mane outscore Salah um, quite a few times in the past, um, especially with good fixtures. Um, so I'm not sure about that. Um, and yeah, there is the other option of Kane to Vardy. So I could do that. Salah and Kane out, Zaha and Vardy in, which will probably be quite lucrative as well. Um, so that's just something to, something to ponder on. I'm not going to make a decision until... Probably Saturday morning on that one. No, I do like the way, I mean, you've got three extra transfers than me, and I think most, quite a lot of people are more near my area mm. than yours. So I feel like if I was in your position, I, I would I would look to use two or three. And that's not just to bring you down to my level. No, I think I'll that it's, it's <laughs> perfect to do so. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think so. Because, I've, I mean, I've actually got more transfers than I thought I would have at this stage. I yeah. Was, having 36 transfers left, I, I, I thought I would probably have about 32, two or three. Uh, so I've been, I've been fairly fortunate with injuries up till now. So that's probably the reason I haven't used so many. And and mm. also post-overhaul, I just went with the bleeding obvious, <laughs> really. Get Grealish, Fernandez, De Bruyne, you know, Kane, all these. You know, mm. I've used my transfers to either get them in or, or got them on the overhaul. 
and just not mess around with them really so yeah I, I mean I'm tempted by that some I, I think Vardy is too good to turn down at the moment with these three good fixtures coming up um, but yeah lots to think about and so keep a, keep an ear out I know uh, Neil will be doing the team news for Fantasy Football Scout on Friday um, so doing that show with Andy do do watch that um, and that'll give us some idea I don't think I actually need to make a decision until Sunday though um, with my moves so I've got even more time which actually makes it worse in a way I wish I, wish I could just do it now and just be done with it but um, anyway uh, that's me and I'm sure other people in similar situations to you and I um, they've got players they want they've got players they don't want they've got Salah what do they do? Um, let's have a look at game week um, 11 and we can probably talk a little about, get, about game week 12 and just see who we're captaining. Um, so before we have a look at those community questions, so looking at those fixtures, so we do have game week 11's fixtures. Um, so on the Saturday, um, 21st November, we've got Newcastle against Chelsea, Villa against Brighton, Tottenham, Man City, Manchester United against West Brom. I think the crowd will go for Fernandes at home to West Brom, but those who have Which been looking, terrifying for me, yeah. Uh, but those that have been looking at his home and away um, performances, Manchester United's, might go elsewhere. And I yeah, sort, we've been dreadful at home. And I've sort of, I'm sort of in that camp because I've got Grealish against Brighton, and a lot of people have got Grealish, and I, I think that Grealish might be the my personal my team best captaincy option that day um, man of the match all he has to do is touch the ball surely he'll get man of the match he's just absolutely the flavour of the month and they those players tend to do well man of the match as well mm. but I don't know yeah for you you've got um, Kane against City yeah I mean I could do De Bruyne I could do Kane just go for the, the player rather than the fixture yeah, yeah. I guess I mean that, that game's hard to call I mean normally I would say um, there could be goals in it but at the end of the day, Spurs haven't been haven't been firing him in of late, and Man City have been the epitome of one nils basically all over the place. So uh, I'm not sure what to expect from that game. So yeah, I mean, if I had Bruno Fernandez, to be honest, I just wouldn't think twice. I just put it on him. I know the home form's not that good yeah. and, and all that, but for me, it's one of those games where he could easily get passing bonus. Yeah. So as a result, I would I would consider him as the captain there. Uh, Grealish you've already mentioned but I've actually got Chilwell in my team and obviously at one point it wasn't known whether he was going to be fit or not I think it's looking likely he might be now um, and he's been so good for me and I feel like Newcastle without Wilson um, are going to struggle to score the only worry is Thiago Silva I think it's just sort of come out they're saying that Thiago oh, Silva I'm, might not make this game just on the point of Chilwell if anyone's got uh, Werner as well now there is some stats on the Fantasy Football Scout uh, members area if you have a look at um, if you go in there and have a look at all, all the different stats there, it's chances conceded on the right, on their right. So that is the opposition's left. Um, Newcastle is very high. <laughs> it's much more than their left. They are very weak there. So you're looking at the, the opposition on the left. And in Chelsea's case, that's going to be Chilwell and Werner. So yeah. the, there's an opportunity there for points for both of those players, I think. And Werner is a really good option if you've got him, I think. Well, I captained Chilwell against Sheffield United and he got 15 points there we go. and, he conced and he conceded a goal. And Sheffield United have had exactly that same mm. problem on their right as Newcastle have. So there we go. Yeah, so I am very tempted to do that one. The problem is it's it's that whole thing of it's the 12.30 game. If Newcastle yeah. score and he does nothing, yeah. you suddenly got the whole rest of the day yeah. terrified of Bruno Fernandes, Kane, De Bruyne, yeah. everyone, Grealish. It's yeah. a horror show, so I'll leave that right up to deadline. I'm not sure yet. Pro probably might go Kane just because he's got a home game. He's on penalties yeah. and he's he's there, playing well. It just goes to show there's a lot of options. Saturday is a good day. I'm expecting you know, some some high scores on that day. Um, moving on to the Sunday, uh, Fulham against Everton, Sheffield United, West Ham, Leeds, Arsenal. Then there's that Liverpool Leicester game. Um, I'm looking at that. I'm my, I'm on Calvert Lewin. I mean, Fulham's defence is bad and, and Calvert-Lewin is getting points. <laughs> so yeah. that's, that's for me. Can't argue with that. But uh, So if I got Vardy in, I wouldn't be captaining that day. But nevertheless, it would be a, you know, a beginning in from Salah, who's definitely not playing. So maybe. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. What What about for you? Is it you know? Is it ever? You got Rodriguez, so would it be? Yeah. I mean, it's on Hammers Rodriguez at the moment, just because yeah. it's Fulham, like you've yeah. said. Again, it's the early game, which worries me a bit. But um, but there we go. I think a lot of people might be in the position now where they they may even have, have to captain uh, one of Dallas or maybe even Gabriel. Yeah. Which is probably not the ideal situation. I think Leeds. I think Diaz didn't get passing in one game this season and it was against Leeds because of the way they play. So Gabriel could get it because he's he's been, you know, he's in the centre of three centre-backs and Arsenal will just pass it around for fun at the back. So there is still a chance, but I wouldn't bank on it. And then with uh, with, Al- with Dallas and Ailing, you just, you don't know really. They've got bonus points, but they also could sh- concede three or four goals. You'd like to think against Arsenal, who can't seem to muster a shot on target, yeah. um, that, that that wouldn't happen. But... For me, I think if it was just out of those two, I'd probably go with the Leeds boys. Um, but yeah, I think an Everton player or or Vardy is fine. Likewise, if you've got sat there with Robertson or Mane in your team, I don't think it's the worst decision in no. the world. I think there's no real massive standout on this day. Probably Calvert-Lewin is the standout, but it's not going to be by much. So I don't think you can lose out too much in, on this day, to be honest with you. Uh, moving on to the Monday, we've got Burnley Palace, Wolves, Southampton. Um, for, for me, currently, I have Patricio, so he would be, he's my default captain. But I do want Zaha, um, and as we'll see when we briefly have a look at Game of 12, um, I think, he, yeah, I think he's the best captaincy shout that day, especially in the, the absence of Ings. And with Wolves playing far too defensively as, as that we would like, so, you know, the likes of Jimenez are just sort of no-goes at the moment, really. They're not just not getting enough points, mm. but um, I guess for you, Guita is the one, and then you'll have yeah. a choice of getting Zaha in. It, it's, it's either going to be Guita, I mean, it's Burnley at home, and I just think, is Zaha going to turn up? Burnley going to do me a favour here? Is it going to be another Nick Pope night? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, Palace aren't known for three free flow and scoring goals, but they've done it a few times mm. this season already. I don't know. Um, I'd be lying to myself if I said that Zaha wasn't the standout. I also really do like Che Adams for this game. Yeah. Um, I know Wolves are pretty solid at home, but I just think Southampton just looks so good in so many games that he's bound to get some opportunities. Um, so I, I do really like him as well. And those two would probably be my standout captains. I'll, it'll either be Zaha or Guita. I haven't decided yet for me. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Um, it's, a, it's a tricky one if you've already got the coverage there because it's, you can definitely see it's the kind of game and with Palace's fixtures coming up, where Guita could easily, easily get, you know, it get, you know. And that, that, that's why I got him at the end of the day. It's just I didn't expect it to be a Monday into a Friday where, yeah. where then, where then you could, you know, it's an obvious transfer move. That's the problem. But I might just stick to my guns. Um, I was having a look at game week twelve. So next week we'll have a look in in earnest at game week twelve, and also hopefully we get some more fixtures to to look at. Um, but looking at that Friday, Palace against Newcastle, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? It's not necessarily this Monday game. It's Palace against Newcastle. And as you were saying um, from uh, Ian's um, uh, website or Twitter feed that you were talking about, um, mm. we you know, we, we could be looking at the prospect of Palace against West Brom coming up on a single game day. And so that would be, that would be also very lucrative. So, yeah, looking at that, uh, Palace against Newcastle on that Friday. Um and then, but then looking at the Saturday, then at twelve thirty, we'll know whether Sa- Salah. Well, we should know anyway whether Salah's available. But Brighton against Liverpool is the opening game, um, so that would be quite tricky. That could be the, the time to possibly move back <laughs> to Salah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's a, 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 yeah, that's why I might avoid Vardy um, and go for that, just because that's a nice. I definitely would want Salah against Brighton. And yeah, this is the thing. Do you think we're going to get clarity from the um, from the press conference? Do you think they're going to say he is out for 10 days from this day and he is going to miss this X Games? I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're just going to say he's self-isolating as in line with yeah. guidelines or something along well, those lines. Be, I, we, it's, we don't know anything really until annoying. he gets a negative test result back. So at the moment, it's positive, positive, positive. So um, as soon as he gets the negative test back, I, I would assume they'll say... Um, they'll at least give a, t- a date when he can be back in training or, or back back with the rest of the team. So I d- we don't know. We don't know. And that's why that's why removing him is tricky. And I think if you're my position with with lots of transfers, it, it's doable. It's very. It makes sense for Zaha sense. for the very reason yeah. that if he's, if Salah's available for Brighton, you can bring him straight yeah, back in if you want in. to. Just, right. It yeah, just, exactly. just fits in well. But if you are struggling a bit with transfers, just... 
hold, hold fire because you probably want Salah back. Um, and it's not, as far as we can tell, he's not actually ill himself. He's just. Got... I think he's got mild symptoms, some people have said. Oh. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Again, um, it's how much you believe of what you hear. I don't know. So lots of options on the Saturday and the Sunday in game week 12 that we, we'll discuss um, next week. But looking on the Monday, it's that Leicester-Fulham game, West Ham-Villa. So the, the options there, captaincy-wise, a lot of people have Grealish. Grealish, great shout. Is Antonio going to be back? So I've got Bowen as my placeholder. I, as you said, I definitely want Antonio because I remember last season getting... I, I don't even know. I couldn't even... I lost count of how many... But it was that ridiculous game where, where I got like 56 points, I think, 60 Yeah, points. Norwich. Four, was it versus Norwich? Um, four goals, yeah. And I still remember that. And I just assume he's going to get that every time. But I just want him. <laughs> um, but Leicester against Fulham, yeah, it's Vardy. Isn't it? So there, there are captaincy options that day. Vardy's not necessarily... Vardy's a great captaincy option, but he's not necessarily the best. If Antonio's back, if... Well, Grealish carries on being, you know as marvellous as he is um, but yeah I mean I'd, I'd, I'd absolutely love Vardy for that day and that's I mean the other thing is the Sunday just before that Kane's away to Chelsea mm. so you just that's where that tactical swap of Kane to Vardy um, yeah. the week the week previous as well because mm. you get the extra game so what was it I can't even remember what it is now so yeah Spurs are obviously home to City um, and then you, you can take him straight out for Vardy, who will then play against Liverpool. Not the best game, but obviously they've got a lot of injuries. Leicester have been known in the past to, to be these giant killers who can counter pretty well. So, you know, I would never turn down a Vardy in a game like that. And then and then obviously you've got this great home game against Fulham where, where Kane plays away to Chelsea the day before. So it's it's looking very enticing. And Spurs' run continues. Like I said, the fixtures, if you just look at them in general and forget individual days, are not brilliant then they're home to Arsenal I mean the way Arsenal maybe are playing at the moment it's just going to be very maybe defensive just be, I mean, maybe what I should do the sensible play for me is is keep Bowen who is who's sort of my weak link at the moment but he is my flexible friend with Antonio and just do Kane and Salah for Zaha and Vardy and then well that, that's pretty much the moves I'm lining up either that or Bruno yeah. instead of one of those yeah. yeah and then just whenever you know fixtures get better and uh, move back to both of them I said the only thing as well I know I've mentioned about using swaps is um is obviously a bit you know nerve wracking, but also when you use a swap and then you get some more information or another player gets injured or one of the people you bought in you're then down on the deal already so it's, it's stuff like for me you know I've got Guita mm. let's say I bring Zaha in I've now used a swap and then Zaha could quite easily pick up an injury he could get yeah. COVID anything could happen. Mm. And then I've I've wasted that's what we saw it with Danny Ings. I know there's there's not too many examples of this and you can't live your life in this way. But um the nature of the beast at the moment is that that's always a possibility. So my I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're if you're unsure whether to do a move but and you have got a viable alternative, quite often saving is usually the better option. Yeah. And al- also just sort of having an injury plan. So say for example you get Zaha in. So I'll be getting Zaha in and he's not a player I want particularly long term you know I'm talking you know months <laughs> um, so I've got to think you know who else would I get and I think uh, obviously 8.9 there were a lot of midfield options to replace him and also in defence um, now you already have Diaz at 9.1 um, I don't so for me I've always got in the back of my mind because I'll have a, I'll have a bit of money spare um, Zaha could always become Diaz if worse comes to worse. If Zaha did get mm-hmm. injured, I need to I need to make that quick snap decision. You know, an hour before deadline, just got the team sheets in. Zaha injured, and Diaz is you know playing later that day. I would make that move. So it's it's, it's sort of thinking of, of that sort of. I was listening to one of the other podcasts. I think it was Paul McNaughty was talking about daisy, daisy chaining players, and I think that's a good way of looking at it. Is thinking mm-hmm. of like these those players just like get those players in and when I want to get rid of them who can I get in and you know where, where does that lead me to around the chain um, and I quite I quite like yeah that you sometimes basketball. have to take a stepping stone before yeah. you get to the player you want you've yeah. got a player you don't particularly want in your team you want X player mm-hmm. but at the moment his fixtures aren't good he hasn't got a captain day so is there an is there a stop gap and yeah. Zaha fills that role for me some people might say he's a long term pick and I couldn't argue with that mm-hmm. to be honest but and there, there will be a few of these and sometimes it feels it feels easier to justify when you can Daisy chain it. I do agree yeah, yeah. Uh, with that. It does feel that way. 
Um, let's go to the community questions. Now, we've probably answered most of these because they're mainly about a couple of players. <laughs> but um, JK is the one. The best replacement for Salah, assuming a Sunday captain is needed. So, yeah, he's thinking it from the perspective of that he perhaps hasn't got Calvert-Lewin um, and, and he's looking for a viable captain. Well, I think we yeah. might be. Get, get Vardy in because he's a good long-term move, but also a good captaincy shout, I think, that day. Yeah, I mean, I would say exactly that. Sunday, Calvert-Lewin is probably the best captain, yeah. but moving forward and long-term, although Calvert-Lewin is great, I, I like Vardy just for those fixtures. Yeah. I know he likes Vardy in fixtures as well, so yeah. I think that's probably the way to do it. Obviously, against Liverpool, you'll be lucky to get points, but you could do. Yeah, and TC and Sam, um, two people also ask about Salah. Same thing, really. Is Salah to Vardy a good shout? Yeah, well, we've answered that. I um, think so. Uh, Fanto Mantle asks, we're all looking at Palace and Zaha. Is the obviously be a standout but being Palace do you think it's more likely to score um, they are more likely to score goals or or not or not concede them I think the way he's worded that basically should we just go for defence rather than attack when it comes to Palace because they are essentially a defense, more defence minded team um, so is the likes of Guita and he's mentioned Patrick Van Arnholt as well a better shout or to Maverick I must admit I did I have toyed with the idea of Patrick Van Arnholt um as instead of Zaha, but I, I, I can't quite be that maverick. <laughs> well, Pal- Palace have scored 12 goals. They've also conceded 12 goals. Mm. So they're exactly level on that. Okay. Um, so considering there's only been eight games and you conceded 12 goals, I don't think it's that great. I think they've only got one clean sheet. Mm. Pretty sure it's one. Yeah. It's one. Yeah. It's one clean sheet. They've got out of eight games. So on that basis, um, you're you're not you're not likely to get a clean sheet. I know they're known as a defensive team yes. and they play in that way, but one out of eight is not a particularly good ratio. So, and and for a start, I'm always of the opinion that a forward as a, as a captain, especially, yeah. is a better pick. Therefore, that leads me straight to the attacking options. Yeah, yeah. Even definitely. in a poor attacking side. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean, that's why I'm thinking all all of my different options I'm considering, all of them have Zaha in them. <laughs> so mm. it's just a, a question of of who um, makes way. Um, Auto Recluse says, I'm thinking of moving Salah to Diaz and have a 4 5 1 for a bit. Um, is there any problems with the, this formation might cause? Um, he's already got his captains covered, so he's, I presume he's already got a Palace, a good Palace option there uh, already. Um, yeah, would you I I mean, I, think about formation at the moment? I mean, it doesn't really matter because you won't stay on it forever, will you? I, I wouldn't say it's a perfect one long term because you'll struggle for those, those striker captain days, which are usually quite lucrative. But You'll have money in the bank, I'm assuming, and you'll um you'll be able to move any of your, your defenders or your midfielders yeah. to a forward on a whim. So I don't have a problem with that. I feel like Diaz is just a great long term pick, and the sooner you can get in your team, the better. However, we have talked about those daisy chain players, and mm. as they're away to Spurs, it kind of makes sense to go Zaha first, then Diaz later, mm. maybe. But I don't have a problem with it at all because Diaz could easily pick up five or ten points versus Spurs. Yeah, no, I I mean I've I've got a three four three at the moment. Um... And I'm looking to either keep 3-4-3 or 4-4-2. I'm not looking at five at the back. I find that a bit too inflexible. I'm actually finding 3-4-3 slightly inflexible in the way um, that I can't remove... I can't. I, I have to remove another defender in order to get Diaz in. So at the moment, my route to Diaz would be a midfielder or an attacker. Um, so I think your setup with 4-4-2, I think currently at the moment... Four four two is a is a great setup because you, you it's the ultimate flexibility I think with that, um, and you can move around. So yeah, yeah I think for me I think four four two is probably the probably the best at the moment. Um, but yeah I think that I, I mean that hopefully that covers everyone's questions. Um, it's it's a bit um, we're a bit focused on a on a, on a very small um, handful of players this week, um, but sometimes weeks are like that really, and the way the fixtures have gone, particularly with Palace. Um, it's it's just one of those um, quite nice times in Sky where it aligns quite nicely and you can get two for one, three for ones, maybe even more, depending on. Yeah, Salazar. I mean, I'm just going to remind people that in the past we've had this sort of thing and and the likes of Zaha haven't been a good option and we've still gone there because they've had that sheer volume. But at least this time, he's looking like he might actually be a decent option. Yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> so there is that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, well, I mean, the positive I have because I don't have any Palace options is, is as long as he just and I don't have any Newcastle options is all he has to do is play. <laughs> all he has to do is play and not do something stupid <laughs> like get sent off or miss a penalty, um, and then I should be okay. <laughs> At least I'll be something up. 
But, yeah. yeah, and if you get that third Friday game that, and you get the six in a row, then, I mean, he said if he gets two points in every single game, captained, so yeah. four, that's four, eight, 12 points you're on from doing absolutely nothing in three games. Let's assume Salah misses the two and you switch to him. That means you're getting eight points, um, sorry, 12 points mm. with a blank in all three games. So it's a transfer for 12 points already. All you need him to do is get... One wow. assist, one goal, one man of the match. Okay, well, and that's you're, and you're um, up. that is quite startling. If if anyone else is sitting there and thinking, "Oh, should I get Zaha?" And well, that just explains it really. Um, it's hopefully win-win. Could be famous last words. Um, we, for- uh, bear in mind, a lot of us did say that for Wilson last time when he got injured within twelve minutes for Newcastle. Yeah, so I, there I, is always that. <laughs> there is always that. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know whether the the fact I I never entertained for a second the thought of getting Wilson in. But Zaha has been tempting me all week <laughs> in the sky. So maybe, maybe I don't know. I, I don't know. There's, some, there's something about Wilson. I don't know what it is in sky, but I'm just not interested in him in sky. And I, I, I can't quite fully explain why I'm not interested in him. But I guess that I guess his blank showed perhaps why. Um, yeah, probably be like that with um, Zaha as well. But um, just before we go, just want to mention the members areas. We mentioned some of those things. I mentioned looking at those uh, right-handed stats for Newcastle. I think get it the right way around. Um, they appeal to the left-sided um, attack for Chelsea. So that's something to look at. Um, and that's all in the members area. But lots of other stuff as well there. Comparison tool is quite good for home and away for Manchester United for those considering um, perhaps not handing the armband to Fernandez, That would be a bold move, though. Um, but for now, um, Luke, thanks so much for joining me and good luck with your game week in the sky. Same to you, Joe. Catch you on the next one.